so much for being here this evening. Um, I, I really, really appreciate it. I, I want this to be, well, we're going to do this part here. I, I want this to be a meaningful, helpful time to you. Um, I know uh, some of you, and I'm increasingly do this, we live and die by our calendar, and so we're trying really, really hard to just giving you as much information as early as possible to make, especially summertime, easier on you. Uh, but then I would just want to talk about youth culture and, and how we can partner with you to, to disciple our students together. Um, that, that's a big deal, too. So we're going to get in that a little bit as well. Um, but the first thing I wanted to do tonight, I wanted to talk about our name tags. The reason we were name tags, and we specifically do this on Wednesday nights, although eventually I want to reach the point we're doing this on Sundays, too. Um, we've been talking a lot about, as a church family, about how hospitality just it, is, is the key to everything. Uh, and that's not going to go away. That wasn't just a sermon series in the church. Um, that's going to be, become the heartbeat of our church family. In fact, one of the things that Pastor Eric says is we, we truly we want to be known as the most hospitable church, not just in Arlington, but the most hospitable church. Hospitable church. There's a big difference between hospital and hospitable. Um, we want to be the most hospitable church that people have ever, ever experienced. And that's totally possible, but it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of changing. So one of the reasons that we were name tags, and, and the students, of course, just, oh, come on. It has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with the fact that the youth pastor sometimes gets people's names confused. But we want to make things easier for the new kid that comes in. When a new student comes in, especially when we have as many different schools represented, this room can be really, really intimidating. In fact, this building, period, can be really, really intimidating. And just having just a little bitty, teeny, tiny, tiny um, um, A and, and helping people learn some that just takes a little bit of edge off that. It's a small thing that we can do, uh, but it's an easy thing that we can do. And so we do the name tags. And, you know, I want to start doing this on Sunday morning, too. We're, we're doing it on Wednesdays because Wednesdays generally is when we see more guests than we do on Sundays, at least right now. I suspect that will continue to change, too. Um, but that's just why we do that. And, and so we also, though, Kate and I both, we very much want to get to know y'all's names. We know your kids. And we love your kids dearly, but we, we want to not only know that your face goes with your child, we want to know who you are and get to know you too. So this is helpful in that aspect as well. So that's why we're doing the name tag thing. Some of you asked, why do I have JT? Last night at uh, the Ninja Zone, uh, Jared Greer, uh, our, our ninja, he really was a pretty pretty awesome dude. He could not get my name right to save, my life, save his life. <laughs> he called me JT all night long. And so guess what a number of students are now calling me? So, yeah, it's TJ. JT's our youth pastor. JT said, so well, this morning, hey, JT, JT. So, <laughs> thankfully for them, uh, my best friend in high school's name was JT. And so I respond to it generally without any problem because he and I, and his last name was Liner. So, even when our teachers would try to split us up by like last names, didn't work. We were still side by side. Drove our teachers nuts. It was awesome. So, anyway, so I still respond to JT. So, I put JT on there. That's, that's the deal with that, okay? Um, I wanted to introduce you to uh, our youth staff, specifically our Sunday morning youth staff. Uh, some of our, 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 our personnel have been in the student ministry for a long time. They've been in the church for a long time. Uh, but that's not true of all of you. Some of you are fairly new to the church like me. And, and then some of our personnel are fairly new to the church. And so I just wanted to, to roll through those so you can kind of have a name and a face that goes with your son or daughter. So we're just we're going to put their pictures up. Hopefully you can see them. Not all the pictures are great. This is Miss Janet. I suspect a lot of you know Miss Janet. She's, but she will tell you she's been around for a really, really long time. Miss Desiree, on the other hand, uh, they moved to Arlington two or three years ago. But they are um, compadres now. And they're doing a beautiful job with the seventh grade girls. The seventh grade girls love them both. And uh, so they're really, really great. Janet, Janet tried to tell me, she said, I think I'm too old for seventh grade girls. I said, no, you're not. And sure enough, you know, two or three classes in new groups. She's awesome. I, I wanted to be mean to Nick and put his picture to the left of Greg to make it look like he was kissing him. <laughs> Nick is a pretty stoic dude. I don't know how we got a picture of him doing a kissy face, but I thought that was awesome. So that's Nick on the left, and that's Greg on the right. Uh, Nick and Greg both have been working with our junior high students for, for a long time. Really, really great guys, really experienced, um, really great gentlemen. So they're a lot of fun. Our eighth grade girls are, uh, of course, my wife on the right, and, and she's got that. I don't actually know whose baby that is. She just likes that's babies. Joe, so. That's um, Isaiah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, if there's a baby around, that's where she is generally. That's her, her uh, drug of choice, baby head smell. <laughs> and then Miss Christy. Um, so they're working with the eighth grade girls and doing a beautiful job. And, and guys, some of my fonts got shifted when we changed computers. I apologize for that. So it's a little small, forgive me. But anyway, there's those two. Eighth grade boys. 
our, our new, newest <laughs> dynamic duo. Uh, this is Jordan Tebow and Chris Calandria. Um, this was Jordan's wedding, and, and they've been best friends for a long time, and I just thought that was a really great picture. But they're doing a great job working together. So really, really great guys. Our ninth graders, uh, this is, these are some of our two newest. On the left is Ms. Amy Abunazar. They've been in, in Arlington for a couple of, years, couple of years. And on the right is Miss Natalie Dickey. Uh, but she, she's been around a long time. Some of you know her really well. They're doing an excellent job with their ninth grade girls. Do what? Oh, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. What was I trying to remember? I asked them how long I've lived in Arlington. And they, they, they're reaching the point where they don't remember anymore, which is kind of fun. So. Yeah, there you go. That's the LABC thing. That's one too. So our ninth grade boys. There we go. So Mr. David, y'all know him probably. On the left though is Trey Ferguson. Trey is he's been at LABC for three or four years now. Really, really great job. They're both doing a great job with them. Uh, Trey did it last year. We got him a partner this year with David, and they, they're doing beautiful, beautiful work together. Our tenth graders. Uh, this is Miss Terry. She picked that photo herself. I asked her to send me a selfie, and, and she picked the fun one, so that was great. She's a fantastic, godly, godly lady, prayer warrior lady. Need somebody to pray for you. Miss Terry is is the one. She is great. We're looking to get her a partner. Uh, but a whole lot of fun there with our 10th grade girls. Our 10th grade guys, um, again, a couple of our new ones. On the, on the left is Mr. Will Abunazar. On the right is Mr. Josh Tibido. Um, Josh is from Louisiana. They just moved here about two years ago. Um, you know, I can't remember what Will told me he did. Um, that's terrible. I need to remember Will that. Oh, Will's an insurance guy, too. Okay, so yeah, so they, they both, there we go. So anyway, great, great guys, and they're doing a fantastic job with the, okay. Just kidding, that works. Anyway, yeah, they're a whole lot of fun. So they were both, you know, what was really fun about them, both of them have never worked with teenagers before, so they were kind of nervous about that, and, and they're just loving it. Every single week, they're smiling bigger and bigger, and the guys are responding to them well. It's kind of cool. So uh, this is Miss Maureen and Miss Wendy. Um, this bottom picture of Maureen is really, really fun. She's getting ready to jump out of a plane in that picture. So um, we just thought that was a fun picture of her. But uh, They've been partners for, for several years now. They do a fantastic job with our 11th grade girls. Our 11th grade guys is our longest serving uh, youth volunteer. This is Melvin. Uh, he will tell you he's forgotten how many years he's been working with students, uh, but he does not hesitate to do an arm wrestling contest, which by the way, he, he won that arm wrestling match, which I thought was pretty impressive. So once you see that, that was on one of our mission trips. Melvin's great. In 12th grade is Miss Mary. She's been working with our senior girls for a long time. She's fantastic. And then our senior guys is brand new. Uh, this is Colby Knight. Uh, Colby is Mr. Fix-It. If you break pretty much anything, he's got a pretty good idea how to do it. At the very least, he will hand you some duct tape and show you how to perfectly uh, round that out. But uh, anyway, man, I, I love our team. I really, really do. I'm so, so thankful. And of course, at least I hope you know, this is Miss Kate, and she's going to come up and, and talk to you all here in a little while, too. She's now officially my associate, which I'm really, really excited about. She's doing a lot of work with our girls and just in general. So um, she's going to uh, do some stuff with you all in a little while, too. She gets to know more and more. But we do, we've got a great team, and we're always looking to add to the team, too. So if you've got interest in, in uh, loving teenagers and not sleeping a lot and, and you know, some of the other crazy things we do on a regular basis. Come talk to me because we, we'd probably love to use you. Uh, so some of the other stuff we're going to talk about, I want to start giving you some dates. And the first big thing coming up actually starts next week, and that's Hanging in the Green. Hanging in the Green is a long-standing tradition in our church um, that we, we as a church family, we allow our students to ring in the Christmas season. The teenagers actually get to lead the worship service December the 2nd, which is a lot of fun. And so we recruited students to, to be a part of the worship service. Students that morning are going to take up the offering. Uh, they're going to serve communion. They'll be running the cameras. They'll be running the computers in the back. Uh, one of them will be running the soundboard with a little bit of help. That, that's a pretty big job. Um, if you've ever seen that soundboard, you understand why I say that. It's, it's massive. There's a lot of buttons. And it's really, really tempting to push all the buttons at once, myself included. Um, but it's going to be a fantastic service. But uh, the way that we do it this year is going to be a little bit different in that uh, the theme of this year's Hanging in the Green is, is He Came to Serve. Uh, the, the scriptures say that Jesus, Jesus said this himself, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And we're going to really take that to heart. And so every Sunday when we meet, and it is, it's every Sunday afternoon uh, after, after connection groups, we're going to eat lunch down in the uh, uh, Fellowship Hall, like always. Miss Suzanne is, is going to take care of us, cookies included, which is a big blessing. Uh, but after we do that, we're, we're going to practice one or two songs really quickly. But then we're leaving, and we're going to a different place every single Sunday to serve in our community. 
So, for instance, the very first Sunday, we're going to go to the, uh, the Arlington Women's, uh, Women's Center uh, right there over by, um, well, it's right off a little. And, discount uh, Tire. Don't worry about Discount Tire. Discount Tire. Thank you. Ar Ar sorry. No, the Arlington Pregnancy Center. That's what it is. Um, and we're going to work in there in the resource room. If you didn't know this, that is, it, it's a uh, very pro-life, incredible, uh, we help women, uh, particularly who are in crisis pregnancy situations, we help women, period. Uh, we're going to work in their resale shop, and then uh, the girls specifically are going to get a tour of the facility. And that's not preemptively, because I'm assuming some of them are going to get pregnant. I want our girls, especially, who have friends who either are pregnant or are going to get pregnant, to know, hey, I, I have been to this great place where you can go and give you some help. And it's a fantastic facility, and they, they've been gracious enough to open up on a Sunday afternoon for us to come and serve them and, and to give, it, especially our girls, a tour. So we're going to do that. Um, also that afternoon, uh, we're going to spend it, the, the boys and I, we'll go help over there for a little while, but the boys and I are going to begin the collection process of all the Operation Christmas Child bags that we're going to place really uh, at several of the neighborhoods right here immediately around the church. And we're just going to be on foot collecting those. People are going to be hanging them on the doors. We're going to knock on doors. But we're going to pick those bags up, load them up, and then bring them back here. So that'll be the first project. Uh, the second week, we will actually spend a better part of the afternoon uh, packing those 500 boxes that you saw in the video this morning. And that's going to take some time. We're also going to be partnering with the children's ministry during that process, too. So that'll be a really, really cool time. Um, so we're going to spend the afternoon packing those boxes. Uh, the third week, we're going to go to Mission Arlington and help get ready the, the Christmas store for them, which is a big, big deal that Mission Arlington does. And then the fourth week, uh, we're going to go to, and I cannot remember the name of it, but the nursing home is just up the road from us a little bit. Uh, we're going to go Christmas Carol with those folks and spend some time just hanging out with the folks and playing some board games and stuff with them. We're excited about that. And then the following Saturday, uh, that last Sunday, uh, we will spend a, a pretty good chunk of the afternoon and evening up here. That's when we will actually decorate the church. We'll be putting Christmas trees up all over the building, putting Christmas lights and wreaths and anything green we can find, we're going to put it up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then that Sunday morning, the next day, that's when the students and I will be leading the service. Um, this year, we're not going to have them to, uh, we may have some t-shirts or something for them. Jason's taking care of that part. Um, but the plan is, at least at this very moment, all of the students... I don't know if we're going to have them sitting on stage, but they'll be on stage and then around the stage, um, just placed in, and it's, it's going to be sort of a choir, but not quite, because we're going to be singing all of it. A lot of our songs this year are going to be um, congregational, traditional Christmas hymns, which should be really fun. It also makes it a lot easier for everybody to learn. Um, so we're going to do those together, but throughout the service, I'm going to be doing live interviews with the students, asking them, and, and they'll know what's coming. I'm not going to surprise them and stick a microphone in their face. That would be really mean. The students will know these questions are coming. And we're going to ask them, hey, well, you know, what was it like serving Mission Arlington? What was it like uh, walking through the pregnancy center? And, and, and we're going to get some live interviews and, and, and ask them more and more, do you have a better understanding of what it means to serve? And we'll be walking them through that process. Some of the students are going to be uh, interviewed via video. Uh, there's any number of them that don't necessarily want to be interviewed live on stage, but they'd be willing to talk to a camera. In fact, they would kind of like to talk to a camera, so we'll go about it that way. So they'll have some screen time. They'll still be solos and... Um, we're going to work on, I think, one instrumental piece, and, and again, the students will be doing the offering and, and communion and all that good stuff, too. But um, we're really excited about hanging in green in the way that, that it's potentially evolved this year. Um, we don't want that morning just to be a show and everybody to clap and go, yay, the students are so great. They are. They're, they're amazing. Uh, what we want more than anything, we want Jesus to be honored, and we want them to experience um, the, the true meaning of Christmas, and that is it's, it's about giving and it's about serving. And so we're going to kind of put that ball in their court, give them an opportunity. So I think it's going to be great. Here's the other thing you'll like to know. Hanging the Green just cost $10 this year. I, I didn't figure you would mind that at all. Yeah, it's, you know, we've been doing 30 and 35 bucks. It's $10 this year. They'll still, they'll still eat. We will probably eat more simplified meals because we're going to be out and about, so we're not going to feed them a full meal and say go work. We'll probably just do sandwiches. You know, and Miss Suzanne's cookies. That work there will always be cookies as long as she's alive. Praise <laughs> Jesus. It's awesome. So, and then knowing her, she will probably still spoil the students with who knows what else. But we'll be doing simplified meals, but we wanted to bring that cost down. And I'm very thankful, too. We had a donation come in that, that even made that even more possible. So, we're really, really excited about that. Um, and this story goes with Hanging Green, but not quite. Um, because we're not doing as many solos and skits and all that stuff, um, there, there's a, a, an itch that doesn't get scratched from hanging the green that normally does. And so 
um, we've been talking about, and we're pretty excited about, um, in February, probably, we're going to do a dinner theater. It's the first time, I, I don't know, I can't say this has never been done around here, but as far as I've been around, and even just kind of going back, it's not happened in a long time. We're going to do a dinner theater, and it'll be part fundraiser, which those are always nice. We like those too, right? But the other part is just giving. We have so many students that are musically inclined and, and drama inclined, like the good kind of drama, not the bad kind of drama, um, and, and instrumentally inclined, and then just talented. And, and we want to give them an opportunity uh, to display those talents in little five second deals. You know, whether it's a kid getting up and singing, or you know, seven of them doing a funny skit, or, or just whatever. So, sort of like a talent show. We're, gonna, we're thinking right now it's going to be around Valentine's Day because uh, there's any number of folks that have said, hey, we would like something fun to do at the church around Valentine's Day. That'd be a cool date night. And so that's what we're looking at. I don't have a specific date for that, so I don't have a slide for you. Just know that that's coming. If your kid's disappointed that you know I'm not going to get on stage quite like I thought maybe I was going to, there's still going to be an opportunity for that. And there's still going to be lots of singing and, and serving. But again, serving is the mantra of hanging in the green this year. So, so again, we'll, we'll fundraise later on and, and, uh, and, and give them the opportunity to show off their talents kind of one-on-one. -on -one. But that's where hanging in the green is going this year, which we're excited about. So that's the first big thing coming. Just want you to know that the youth Christmas party this year will be December 19th. Uh, that will be the – actually, that will probably be the last 712 of the year also because the following week is Christmas and the week after that is New Year's. And, and so just so you know, you have that in your calendar. Uh, if I understand right, the students will have finished school either that day or the day before, at least Arlington ISD. I haven't looked at that, the MS, MS, I, MISD calendar yet, uh, or Kiddales. But um, anyway, that, that'll be the Christmas party, so you just have that on your calendar. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, uh, the next big thing, though, is January. We're going to do Dean out in January this year instead of February. We're still partnering. If you were here with us last year, we're still partnering with uh, I think it's 12 other churches, which is a lot of fun. That's part of why we can do Dean Al so cheaply, which, again, um, I, I'm a cheapskate, but it's because I grew up poor. <laughs> and so um, there were lots of things that I just didn't get to do as a teenager because because costs were just what they were. And so I promise I will always do everything I can to, to bring these things down. Uh, but Dean Al is going to be January 25th to the 27th. Um, it's going to be the central hub will be First Baptist Grand Prairie, so it won't be going quite, quite as far in Grand Prairie. Um, if you don't know where that's at, it's right beside Ikea. If you want a moms, if you want to drop us off, go to Ikea. God bless you. Have some fun, okay? Um, Ikea will appreciate that, and I will too. But uh, anyway, and in fact, I think we talked about on Saturday, after we do one of our worship services, we're going to take all the students over to Ikea and get their... Uh, um, yes, they're the other Swedish meatballs. So, yeah, I think that'll be a lot of fun. Makes a quick, easy, cheap meal, so... Uh, anyway, just know that D now is coming. Uh, the theme this year, we don't have an exact name for it. I think, I think it's going to be why not we're going to be looking at the book of Daniel together over the course of the weekend, which will be a lot of fun. Um, some of you might be thinking, you know, didn't we just do Daniel? And the answer to that is yes, but um, we're going to dive into some of the, the teenage aspects of Daniel. Daniel, uh, Because by and large, most of the, the, the book of Daniel, as we look at it, it's Daniel was a teenager when he was experiencing those things. Not all of the Daniel Lyons did, he was an old man. But most of the rest of that stuff he did, he was a pretty young guy. And so uh, we're going to go to go into that, which should be a whole lot of fun. But that's Misfits Weekend. That's the, the, the large group name. We'll just call it Dean Al around here. But that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, the other big thing, uh, we didn't do this last year. And, and I had a bunch of girls that were hopping mad at me because I didn't even know this thing existed. But the Therefore Gathering, this is a high school girl thing. In fact, a couple of our students are now on the leadership council of this. Uh, Pantigo Church hosts it, but it's now its own entity. Like Pantigo invented it, and then the people who started it are just now they're their own own entity. But it's an incredible just girls conference. Um, I want to, and I don't even know how to do this, but I've, I've decided, and me and a couple of the other youth pastor town, we're going to come up with a, a guys conference, and I really want to call it the whatever conference. Um, <laughs> We can deal with the name later on. But right now, we've got the Therefore Gathering for Girls, which really is a great time. If I remember right, that's $40, but those are the dates. Um, that'll be um, – they won't stay the night at the church, but a couple of our ladies have offered to host the girls at their house. So it would be kind of like another little shorter D now because it's just Friday night and then Saturday. I don't even think it's Saturday afternoon. I think it's Friday night Saturday morning. But it's a really cool, cool opportunity for them. Um, the guys and I, we may go – I don't know, shoot guns or something that day. I don't know what we'll do. We'll do something fun that day. It'll be great. So um, spring break this year, we are going to go over on the mission trip. 
I, and I'm excited about that. The, those of us that went on the mission trip last year, we had a ball. And we just did it for three or four days. In fact, we left, last year we left on Saturday. Um, we got to our host church that morning. We, we worshiped with that church family that hosted us. And then we worked Sunday afternoon, Monday afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, and then came home Wednesday morning, first thing. This is going to be somewhat of the same thing, except this year we're partnering with an organization called Bounce. That is the Southern Baptist Convention teenage arm of disaster recovery. Um, praise God, a lot of the disaster recovery, the big major things have happened down in the Houston area, but there's still a ton of work to be done, in particularly in little communities like Orange. Um, Houston got all the resources, understandably, lots of little bitty towns that still need help. And so Bounce, um, we're going to partner with, I bet, I haven't seen the exact numbers yet. I bet it'll be 15 or 20 other churches will be congregating with us. We'll sleep in a school for a few nights. Um, this particular group, uh, they'll put us in, in work teams, and there'll be high school work teams and junior high work teams. And, but we'll actually, over the course of three days, we will not quite but almost entirely rebuild some houses in three or four days, which is a really pretty amazing project. So the kids have got a lot of hands-on experience. Uh, if that's your uh, uh, if you're into that sort of thing, I would love for you to go, uh, if, especially if you've got some construction um, knowledge, I'd love for you to go with us. But that's, that trip's going to be $160. I'm hoping to bring that down some more. Uh, transportation is, is a part of that cost. Uh, but we're excited about this. I think I initially signed us up for 30 spots. It's possible for us to have more, but I realize some of you have already got family vacations planned for spring break, and that's awesome. But if you don't, you won't, don't want your kids sitting around eating Cheetos all week, Send them with me, and we will have a great time. But again, that will be Sunday through. We'll be home on Wednesday. No, I guess it will be Saturday through through Wednesday. Uh, and then they still get part of their spring break to just, again, sit around and eat Cheetos, play video games, and I'll be doing the same thing with them. That will be cool. So um, just some dates you need to know. This isn't necessarily for youth, but, but a lot of you got younger kids. VBS, is, that's our, our traditional week. Hey, babe. Uh, the only thing that's changed with VBS this Steve, week. those aren't the right dates for VBS. They're not? No, that's like a Wednesday or something. The 19th is a Wednesday. So oh. like the 17th through the 21st? Maybe it was 17th. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but traditionally, whatever Father's Day is, that's traditionally when we've started Sunday night VBS. We're not going to do that anymore. We, we want to honor Father's Day. So VBS will start that Monday. Little kid VBS will start that Monday morning. And then big kid VBS will happen Monday afternoon. So big kid VBS will just be four days this year, not five. They'll live. We're confident of that. Mm -hmm. uh, usually by day five, the older kids are kind of done with it anyway. And so doing it four days is probably better than a long, long scale. Um, but yeah, it's still the, the, the Monday after Father's Day, whatever that day is, that's when VBS starts this year. Kids camp it is July 19th to 23rd. And I am confident those days are right. So that is still over the weekend like last year was. And that's still down at River Bend. Uh, we will be still using students. In fact, some of them are already talking about their opportunity to go and serve down at River Bend because that's a big deal for them. Um, we're pretty excited there. They're making some uh, pretty substantial changes uh, to kids' camp, like all really positive, not only for our church, but also for the other churches coming. In fact, they've even changed that. I may be letting the cat in the bag here, but I'll, I'll do that. Nobody's here to stop me. We're calling it Uncommon Camp, which is pretty neat. Um, and, it, and it's, it, yeah, we're very, very excited about that. And there's already been some brand new churches that have signed up to come and join us this year, which is going to be really cool. So, um, but that's at River Bend, July 19th to the 23rd. That'll be great. Here's the other stuff going on for students. I'd let our seniors take a vote again this year on what camp they wanted to attend. Uh, we gave them three different options on camp. One of them was SPYC, which is where we went last year with Floyd Ada. Um, eight of the nine seniors voted, however, to go to Lake Levon. If you don't know where Lake Levon is, it is just north of Plano, so we're only going about an hour away, so that's nice. That means our transportation costs go, 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 go down dramatically. Um, but Lake Levon is this really cool camp that really, it kind of sits almost on an isthmus in the middle of this lake. Um, and um, you can see some of the stuff. They have Lake Lakefront. That, I think this is a pretty big driver for them. Part of the afternoon, you can jump on a boat. and Not skiing, it's not full boat skiing. They do the rafting thing, though. They've got archery tag. A couple of the boys thought that was fun. They've got a pretty neat, uh, it's not jumping off of a mountain neat, but they've got a pretty neat zip line uh, and then some big water slides. And I, as you can imagine, water is a pretty big theme for, for this particular camp. That funny looking fellow there, though, is a part of camp that I'm excited about. His name is Runks. Actually, his, his last name is Runkles. He won't tell anybody what his first name is, so just people call him Runks. He's been a friend of mine for a long time. He is my absolute most favorite youth speaker, though. He's fantastic. Uh, 
very, very godly dude, uh, and is maybe the only guy I know that has more energy than me on a regular basis. Um, and he's about 10 years older than I am. Really, really cool guy, though. So they're going to love Runks for sure. Uh, you can see that's that's the base price for camp right now. That, that is before we do any fundraiser. That's before Faster Than Pastor. So camp cost already is going to be um, even better, too. So I'm excited about that. So anyway, it's Lake, Lake Levon. It's about an hour away. Um, you can tell your kids that. We're going to announce that to them on Wednesday night. We've got a promo video that um, it, it's a little bit long, but I'm going to show that to them Wednesday night. But that is, it's going to be a really, really great time. So that's youth camp. And then I'm excited about this. We're going to go to Seattle this summer. We're going to go help our church plant up there. Uh, you've heard Pastor Eric uh, and maybe even Wes talk about the Magnolia Festivals or, or, or Summer Fest they do up there. Um, we're going to take students to go help out with that. The only thing I don't like about this is because it is the first part of August, I realize that um, that probably cuts out some of our band kids. It probably cuts out some of our football players because that's when two days and band practice and all that sort of stuff starts. That being said, and visiting with our church plate up in Seattle, I talked to him about, you know, could we come up in June, could we come up in July, and, and we could, but this is when they need the help. And I, at the end of the day, we're, we're going to serve them, not us, you know, us go up there to be served. And so that's when they need us, that's when we go. But we're excited to go up to Seattle. Um, in fact, I'll just tell you this too. Um, going forward, nine times out of ten mission trips that we do from now on, I want them to be to our church plants. It just makes sense to me that we would go and support our people. And like we're already putting a bunch of, of money as a church family into these places. Why wouldn't we go and support them with, with our, our teenage, uh, maybe not experience, but our teenage energy and, and, and drive and excitement. Uh, part of the joy of, of a mission trip is the fact that students do get to see a new part of the world that they may not know much about. Um, but, but the other big part of a mission trip is we want to go and be, be making a, 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 an actual difference. And then the trick to that is partnering with people that you know are going to do the really good follow-up work. And the people that we've got on the ground in all those churches, there are people. We know they're going to do great follow-up work. So, so that's the plan. We're going to go to Seattle. Uh, again, that's the base price you're looking at. That's before Faster Than Pastor. That's before the mission trip. We'll, the mission committee will kick some money in. So I'm very confident that price will come down. We will fly to Seattle. Some, somebody said, hey, you're going to drive. I, I asked Wes, I said, how, how long would it take us there? Or no, it's Jordan. It's a solid three-hour drive from here to Seattle. Have you made that one? Day. What? From here days. to Seattle? You said three Three hours. days? Yeah. Days. Solid three days. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to fly. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, we kind of want to drive there and work for a day and then drive home. We'll, we'll make that, that flight, and uh, that'll be a good time, too. So, uh, And then it sounds like the weather there's pretty nice in August. So that'll, that'll be our other mission opportunity, uh, spring break and summer, which would be very cool. I knew that was going to happen. This is the big one, though. Um, so years past, juniors and seniors had the opportunity to go to one or two places, either China or to go to Israel. This was our Israel year. Uh, none of the seniors took the bait on that, which made me sad because that means I don't get to go to Israel again. But um, we're, our, our partnerships with the folks in China, but the work that we needed to do there is done. And so, again, I want to partner with our church plants. And so we're going to go to Bosnia and go help the Greenwich family. Um, and it, it, yes, we're going to go skiing for Jesus, <laughs> which is all like I, when, when they contacted me, they said, Hey, how would you feel about coming up here to help us? I love that. And, 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 and she said, no kidding. Like we need teenagers to come up here and ski and talk to people about Jesus while they're skiing. I said, I don't think I'm going to have a hard time talking people into doing that trip at all. Like that uh, sign me up. Cool. Uh, but no kidding. That's what they do over the course of the winter. Everything in Bosnia is covered with snow. And, and so they, they are up on the ski lifts, and they are talking to people about the Lord. And the Greeks is going to show us how they go about doing that. So it's going to be an incredible opportunity to help their church plans. Um, yes, ma'am? So if they're not on junior and senior and volunteer, would you be open to that? I'm totally open to that, yes. That's just where we're starting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and this is going to be another one, too, um, both for the China trip and the Israel trip traditionally. Um, when a family said, hey, we want to go on that, if your family includes somebody that's not a junior, see, in fact, a couple of times it's been kids that weren't even in the youth group. If your family goes, let's go. Like, we're all about that. And so, But, yeah, we're very excited about this opportunity. Lots and lots and lots of details still left to work out. In fact, that, those dates aren't even specific yet. Uh, but I did notice, though, um, Christmas break is getting longer, which is pretty awesome. This year's Christmas break is like three weeks, which is stellar. Um, 
you might not think so. I'm, I'm pretty jazzed about that because that's lots of opportunity to do stuff with kids. But, but this will be, again, this is 2019 uh, into 2020. We'll leave a couple days after Christmas because I, I don't want to interfere with Christmas time. We'll leave a couple days after Christmas. We'll almost certainly be over there over New Year's. But then we'll get home, you know, the third or fourth, and they'll still have basically a week left of, of Christmas break, which is kind of nice. So, yeah, we're terribly excited about this opportunity. So let's let's go ski for Jesus. Um, here's some stuff. Those, those are the big trips and the big dates that I want you to know about. Um, so this building that we're in right now, the loft, which is, is a great building, uh, it's about 11 years old now. And, and that's starting to show, both in, if you look around the room, both in the colors and the equipment, um, you can even notice some cracks and stuff in the walls. And so we're starting the process of renovating this room. So now that, to do everything that we possibly want to do is truckloads of money. We don't have truckloads of money. What we do have right now, though, is about $4,000. Uh, somebody gifted the church back in the summer some equipment that was pretty neat, but it wasn't stuff that we could use exactly. And so we sold that equipment and the funds that have come in from that, um, we are using to do some renovation work in here and down in the fellowship hall for Kids Rock as well. Because we, again, we, we, we highly value youth ministry and children's ministry. So we're starting that process, which is pretty exciting. And I wanted to walk you through a couple of the things that we've already done. Um, we got a new computer back there, which is pretty exciting. The one that we had um, was just constantly freezing and breaking. And, so we got rid of that, and so we've got a new computer back there. That was the first step. The next thing that we're going to do, though, is, is we're not going to do projector up here anymore. To do a, a nice HG projector, they're fantastic, but those are several thousand dollars, never mind the silly upkeep on the light bulbs. And so in, in talking with uh, Jason and some of the other planners, I said, how hard would it be just for us to get two, two good-sized TVs because those don't break like the light bulbs do? Turns out we can buy two 70-inch TVs, at least two, at least 70-inch TVs. We're hoping to get 80s because I'm going to do some Black Friday shopping. Um, we're going to do one on both sides of, of, of the wall here. In fact, they'll be attached um, to the wall themselves, and they'll be on articulating arms. So they'll actually, when we're not using them, we'll fold them up against the wall to keep them safe, and then they'll fold back out here. So there'll be a TV screen on, on both sides, so that'll be really nice. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to paint that back wall black. Now, right now, we've got those, those beautiful, fancy curtains. It turns out that's a fire hazard. Um, we've been doing that for years, and that's a fire hazard. So, we, yeah, we, uh, we're going to take those down and, uh, and paint the black. And in fact, the better part of the stage will be black, which will be nice. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to put a new soundboard uh, back there in the, um, well, the soundboard area. In fact, we're going to buy a matching soundboard to match the one that's coming that they're buying for Kids Rock as well. Uh, and it's going to be the junior version of the soundboard that we have in the worship center. Because the idea is we want to train students to run the soundboard, and we want to train adults to do the soundboard. And for some reason, if the sound guy uh, goes down on Sunday morning, a teenager can slide in there and he can handle it. And kids that have learned how to run the soundboard in Kids Rock, when they move up, they can, they can handle what we're doing up here. So we're just going to keep making things seamless. And, and so guys that are serving up here can serve downstairs and vice versa. It's going to be really, really cool. So we're buying matching soundboards. But the other stuff we want to do, these lights are, are about as old as the building. We want to replace those. Um, I told you about the TV screens. Uh, we, we need a new drum stand. We're, we're built, but not a drum stand. Uh, the drum... Um, shield. Shield. Thank you. Jump, drum shield. Um, we need a new one of those. Um, by and large, teenagers don't mind the noise, but the people below, below us do. So, um, And then again, eventually, we would love to just paint this whole room. I, re I remember distinctly when, when you know, 17 different colors was, was cool for students, and that's not cool so much. And again, if the goal is to be the most hospitable and welcoming and teen-friendly youth ministry in the area, we, we want our, our facilities to, to recognize that. And so we're, we're going to, uh, definitely the way that we treat people is going to represent that, but eventually we want our facilities to match that too. I'm telling you this not only because we're excited about this and you'll be seeing those changes come but if for some reason you're looking for a, a really great, easy tax donation for the end of the year, I've got a great opportunity for you. Let's see that gives you an opportunity to buy in, okay? Because we are we're excited about this. But um, at the end of the day, let me hear, let me say this really, really clear. I thank God for the space that he's given us. Really so don't hear me complaining. We just want to be good stewards of it and do the best with what we can uh, in the space that he's given to us. It's really, really great. So we're doing that. Um, oh, we, we want to put up pictures, and, and we're actually, we want to put up pictures of your kids. Because you have beautiful kids, right? If you look at some of the art that's hanging in the building, 
those are pictures of people who aren't teenagers. <laughs> They're pretending to be teenagers. And it just, again, we want to put actual LABC students, uh, whether it's trips that we've been on or just action shots around here or whatever, we're going to kind of start to decorate the facility with those things. And then the other thing, and Kate, who is very artistic, she's chomped a bit. We want to decorate the, uh, the stairwells. Um, those drab, like, concrete, nothing in them whatsoever that the students spend a lot of time in, after going up and down, we're going to decorate those too. So again, we're going to do some work. All that takes time, and not a ton of money, just mostly time. We're excited to do that. But I wanted to make you all aware of that. And I think that's, that's oh, outdoor r, &R. This is kind of fun too. We're talking about eventually, and I don't know when this is going to happen, we want to do, um, I'm excited about this, a big honking grill outside. Because we want to be a place that families can come and have a picnic. Whether, and by the way, whether they're members or not, we just think that would be really great for a family to come up here and spend time in our church. And, and if it happens to be while I'm here in the day, your pastors will joyfully go out and, and, and just say hi. You know, that would be really, really cool. Uh, we're talking about we've got all this open space. We think it would be really, really neat to have Frisbee golf out there. That would be super easy and, again, a lot of fun. Um, but, again, we're just going to make our indoor and outdoor facilities a place that, that families can congregate. We, we, you know, if we're really dreaming big, we would love to have an indoor playground uh, that, that moms can come up here and do a week. Right now they go to Chick-fil-A. Mr. Bill, Chick-fil-A is wonderful, but I would rather they be here than Chick-fil-A. You know, I think that would be fantastic. So we want to be a place that, that moms, not necessarily single moms, but just Moms that are home with their kids during the day, we'd be a, our church could be a haven for them to come and just be here. And then again, we can minister to them in the process, whether they're part of our family or not. So lots of dreaming going on. Again, those things take time and money. Uh, but just know that we are. We're dreaming. That, that's kind of the goal. We, we want to be a place that, that families know, again, whether they're part of our family or not, families are welcome here. And we're excited about because we love people. So that's, that's what's going on there. Um, one of the last things, and I'm going to turn it over to Kate. I've been using a phrase a lot lately, and I wanted to use it with you just kind of publicly. We as a student ministry, we are more than Martin. And here's what I mean by that. There are 29 schools representing our youth group. I know I sent out an email that said 31, and I accidentally counted one school twice. Sorry. Hey, there was an intentional <laughs> lie. There's 29 different schools represented in our youth group. And Martin, and the Martin Cluster is just three of them. Now, if you do the numbers, yes, the... the not quite, a little over half, yeah, a little over half are the Martin Cluster kids. But that's still a whole lot of students that, that don't have anything to do with Martin. And, and truth be told, they can care less about Martin. They really do. Now, I, I do. I, yeah. And that's, yeah. And that's, so here's the deal. And, I, and I've had a handful of parents pull me aside and say, hey, you know, my kid didn't go to Martin. And I, I, I know. And hopefully you've noticed this about me too. I, I, I don't just spend time at Martin. Kate's not going to just spend time at Martin. We care about your kid and your kid's school and their games and their plays and the stuff they're into. We care about their community. All that's simply to say that that's kind of the attitude that we're moving towards. Now, because of Mark's proximity to us and Young's proximity to us and then also uh, Little Elementary and Diddle Elementary, there are things that we as a church family are going to do because those schools are our neighbors. And that's, that's a different ballgame. As far as the student ministry goes, and I'm giving you permission to call me on it. If it ever feels like we're just focusing too much time and attention and your kid's getting left behind, please let us know that. Because I do. I care deeply about that. And I care about the band kids. I don't care about just the football team. I care about the, the drama kids. And I, I mean, I went to a chess match one time. Like, I, we want to be into the stuff that your kids are into because we care about your kids. And part of connecting with your students is, is doing and being involved in and knowing what's up in their, their worlds. So tomorrow, this, and I don't say this to brag, tomorrow I'm driving to Plano because one of our girls are playing volleyball in there, and that's where the ball game is. And I'm excited about that. She's the one kid at that school, but God bless her, she's part of our family, so we're going to go support her. We are more than Martin. Does that make sense? That's really, man, that, that's my heart cry. I want you to know that and hear that. And again, if it ever feels like we're just, we're focusing too much time and attention over there, don't hesitate to bring that up to me because it may be a situation where you just don't see what we're doing in other schools, but, but I, man, I'm, I'm human and I'm going to fail. I don't want to, but I will. But when I screw up, I, I want to own that. So, so just know that that's where we're heading. We care about your kid and where they're going. So we're going to be in Mansfield and Kendale, and again, tomorrow I'm going to Plano and, and Edward and Grand Prairie. We get kids in Grand Prairie and kids in Fort Worth, and it'll be all over. That's a big deal to us. Okay? Kate, you ready? Kate's going to do some work. Last time we met, we talked about apps, and some of y'all said, hey, we want to learn more about apps. Yeah. 
Kate is 20, and this TV shut off, so the TV's going to be a little bit fuzzy. That's my bad. Um, this is one of the TVs we want to place eventually, by the way. This is a great TV, but it takes 20 minutes to warm up, and so sometimes it looks a little fuzzy, but you should be able to see everything you need to see on it. Kate's going to show you some stuff uh, on apps, specifically, I think, in relation to location services and some social media and stuff that your kids are really into. So take over, Kate. All right, if you can't see... The TV up here, it's going to be real small because I'm doing screen mirroring. So if you can't see this, then move forward. We have a whole row of chairs <laughs> right here. All right, so I'm going to be talking about primarily Instagram and Snapchat today because there's a couple of little things that I've seen that have popped up that really worry me. Um, so we're going to go over Snapchat. How many of you know your kids have Snapchat and know how to work it? Okay. So, a lot of your kids have Snapchat, right? So there is this one little feature that not, not many people look at. So on your screen, I'm gonna show you because it won't show up here. When you pinch the screen, this pops up, right? So these are called Bitmojis and you can create them to look like yourself. Um, this one is me, it has a little ghost on its face. That means I'm not sharing my location. However, everybody else, that you see on here is sharing their location. So a lot of your kids have this on. Here's what's scary about this, and I'm gonna take on my stepsister. She's all the way over here. I can zoom all the way in, and she's at work right now. She works at Red Lobster. I can see exactly where she is. So when your kids are at home, this pops up, and Google Maps is like connected to this, so you can see exactly where you live and where they are. Because I don't have mine on, um, mine doesn't show to everybody else, but I'm just gonna show you this kind of again. Um, I can zoom all the way in, and if mine was on, I could look in and say, okay, I'm at Lake Arlington Baptist Church, and I'm in the LC, and I can kind of figure out where I am. So at any point in time, this is running in background apps, like even if this is closed, this is still running in the background. So your kids have like, a waving sign that says, here I am, I'm over here. That's scary. So, I wish I had to turn that off. <laughs> um, so, when you click on your little person, if it doesn't have their face, there's Jordan. Jordan has his on. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you click on it, it's going to pop up, and you're going to tap your little thing. So, mine is on ghost mode. I'm going to turn this off, so you can see, now mine doesn't have the little thing on it. That means my location is on. There's settings, it can be only these friends, so my best friend and then Jordan could only see my location. But if I turn on ghost mode, I can do three hours, 24 hours until turned off. And I keep mine off because I don't want people tracking me down because I'm a woman and sex trafficking has gone up so, so much in North Texas. And that's just scary. I don't want anybody to know where I am at any given time. If I put my location on Facebook, that's different. Um, usually I put that on there after I've left that place, but at any point in time, I don't want anybody looking and going, okay, here she is. So, that's Snapchat. Um, Snapchat is just, I don't know how much you guys know about it, but it's not a great app. I don't use it a whole lot just because it's really tricky. Those pictures go away right after you look at them, and it's really just so sketchy, and there's a really fine line. Sorry, I'm going to move this way so you can see. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to hop over to Instagram. This is Instagram. How many of your kids have Instagram? And a lot of them do. Uh, this is a girl's Instagram. Um, so she is not on private. So if your kid's profile is not on private, then they can see everything that you see here without having to follow them. Right? So the popular thing to do right now, and I have mine on like personal blog because I have a personal blog, but a lot of your kids are doing this business Instagram. So it's a setting um, that you can turn on if you have a business or something that you associate your Instagram with. When you're on a business profile, and right here it says personal blog, that's how you tell it's a business. Um, it can't be on private, so it's already public. And then there's these two little things right here. It says email and call. So, if your child has a business Instagram, they are required to have at least one form of contact information that is public. So, oops. 
Um, at any given time, if your child has this on, whoever can click email and email your child or click call and call your child. So I'm going to push call. I'm going to call that number. Oh, what is that? So TJ and I wondered if we made a fake Instagram and just put some Instagram model on there and put Martin High School 2020 and followed some of your kids. How many would, would follow back? 17 of our children followed back, and we made this on Thursday. So from Thursday night to now, we had 17 follow back, and some other children who followed, and I don't even know who they are. Um, so oops, I could have been a 46-year-old man who saw this oops, opportunity, and I made this in like three minutes, who can make an Instagram like this, and follow your child and use leverage like, oh, I run a photography business and I would love to take pictures of you because a lot of your kids are like, good pictures, like that's awesome, I want to put that on my Instagram. It's so, so easy. And I didn't think that this many of our kids would follow back, but they do. Um, without knowing who it is, this person doesn't even live in America, she lives in Spain. Um, so if you would like to know if your child followed back, can talk to me afterwards and I can tell you whether or not they did. Um, but with the business Instagram, I really want to put the emphasis on, I have told a few of your children that, hey, your phone number is on your Instagram. And a lot of them have taken it off, but it's just scary for me to be scrolling through and seeing that. It worries me so much because I care so deeply about your girls and I don't want anything to happen to them. So I'm always keeping a lookout for that. So at any given time that I see that, I jump on it and say, hey, this is not okay. This isn't okay. Um, but that's kind of what I have for you. Oh, to turn this off, um, maybe. I forget how you turn it off, but if you Google it, <laughs> it's on Google. I had to Google it last time because <laughs> I don't remember how to do it. But there is a way that you can take this information off, um, and there's a way to take the business profile of that Instagram off. And um, there's also a way to put your profile on private. I had my Instagram profile on private until I was out of high school and running a blog. And so I was just a little bit more careful with what I'm posting and um, my locations and just being more cautious because I like sharing what I write because I, you know, at any given time, someone's gonna read that and go, that really spoke to me. And I've had emails come in and say, hey, I really liked this and that's helpful. But I don't really think that your children necessarily need random people emailing them uh, until they're adults. So that's what I have for you guys. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Does anybody have any questions or anything they like don't really know about social media that they want to be walked through? Other new apps that are coming out that are worse than this. Um, not that I know of. There's obviously I didn't walk through Facebook because it's like in your settings, but there is a way to turn off location stuff in Facebook. Um, Twitter isn't as bad. It's a lot of just keeping your profile private. Um, there's an app called Musical.ly that I don't know anything about, um, but I do know that it's the same kind of deal. You wanna have their profile on private and a lot of predators are using Musical.ly right now. Um, and so just making sure that your child isn't sharing their location or taking pictures in front of the house that have the address on it. Um, so I would just keep a lookout on Musical.ly for now. But um, I know that Facebook is starting to die. Snapchat is starting to die. So here in the next five or six months, something's gonna pop up. We just don't know what it is. So does that answer your question? And Musical.ly is kind of catering towards younger kids, especially mm -hmm. like six, fifth, sixth graders are really into it. So just like yeah. that. The other app that's growing in popularity is called Kick. It's K-I-K. -K. Um, I don't know how many, if any, of our students are using it, but the big thing about Kick is the ability to communicate anonymously. Um, that's where a lot of cyberbullying is happening. Um, not necessarily specifically. It's just you can jump up there and say, "Man, I hate so and so," and it's an opportunity. 
the idea is a student has the opportunity to anonymously can say whatever about somebody that I need to say, just get that off my chest. The problem is, again, that information becomes public, and so somebody can jump on kick app and go, is somebody talking about me on there? And sure enough, people are. So, yeah, just be aware of that one. Um, like I said, it, it kind of it goes up and down in popularity. Uh, but Kate's right about Snapchat. Snapchat's the one that, that and I'm thankful because I despise Snapchat if in the way that it was created. It's just, just gross. Um, it was designed by a, a few perverts in, in Stanford. They got kicked out of school for it, and they were using it just to share naked pictures of a female. They were taking pictures of girls without the girls realizing it, share with each other, and the pictures disappeared. And that was the that was the reason why behind the whole, hey, in this school, my photo disappears. That's not just people go, uh, take pictures like that. It was a way to share news secretly with others. That's the, the, the reason why Snapchat was created. So I, I've always hated that one. I'm thankful the business is going broke. You know, I, I suspect Facebook or somebody like it's going to buy it and rejuvenate itself, but we'll see what happens. Um, but, but yeah, we will always keep you posted as best as we can. Uh, one of the many reasons I wanted Kate around, because she's, she's got her ear to the ground on a lot of this stuff. Um, uh, we will keep you posted on, on what's popular with students. And, the biggest deal, though, it is don't, don't hesitate to pick up your kid's phone and just scroll through it and say, hey, what is this? And, and, and if they won't tell you, <laughs> this is my phone now. Because I, I suspect all of you that you're the ones paying for those phones. So it's not your kid's phone, it's your phone. So be, be, be in charge of that sucker. Like I said, if you don't recognize something and, and don't be afraid to, to get up in your kid's business online, social media-wise, if you see something you don't like, talk to your kids about that. Um, that's it's not their own little private world. They're, they're still in your house. They're still living by your rules, even when it comes to the internet. So be, be aggressive in that sense. But you have to speak. I did have a question. No. Um, I don't know anything about it yet, but I know that there's like um, things that you can do. Uh, I'm so, like, I, I'm technologically, like, zero level. There's things that you can do to, like, I don't know, protect your kids' phones or, like, show you what they look at. Yes. Yeah, that's, you can clone your kid's phone, which is pretty interesting. Um, I wish Miss Pauline Medlin was here. She has mastered that. I want to know with all the, that kind of Sorry. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> you said it again. Um, yes, you can clone your phone. Or it's audio for the video. Oh, I you, yeah, you can, you can clone your phone, clone your kid's phone so that all the messages that are coming into his phone and her phone, you see all of that, which is really, really handy. Now, there's, it's like every other technology, but there are ways to skirt that, and the kids figure those things out. I, I know. Right. That I'm more worried about. Yeah. Yeah, than my own. But just, I mean, so other than like cloning, isn't there like there's things that you can circle and circle go? It's yeah, those are pretty things. handy. Yes, it's yeah, it's a tool that you stick on your home network that controls what the internet can and can't do in your house, including okay, up to right. like just cutting it all off completely. Okay. Well, it's circles made yeah. by Disney. Yeah. It's very, very okay. handy. Okay. Well, apps are really yeah, the way around all that stuff. So usually on iPhone, if you update to the newest version, they, they just came out the newest updates of, uh, of iPhone or Corey. Now they finally got stuff on there. It's yep. actually integrated the phone. It's even better than the apps you can subscribe to. Heads up, though, uh, the new iOS just came out a couple weeks ago. And this is dirty of them. A lot of your privacy settings went back to non-private on that. So you might go through just your own individual phone and, and check your privacy settings, because that, that new iOS, when it reset, uh, they, they were so kind to turn off your privacy settings. Wasn't that fun with them? They're, they're, they basically they, want to show that. They do. Yeah, they, they totally do. So, yeah. Yeah, and, that's, and those, you know, those are going to be the phone itself and a lot of your individual apps. So, um, I'm going to throw that up real quick, because that brings me just Sorry, I forgot about this. Um, if you go to settings and you go scroll down to privacy, this is where all that privacy stuff is. So location services, um, all of your apps will be listed here and you can choose which ones are sharing your location or if at all, you can turn that completely off um, on your kid's phone or choose which ones will be running in the background like Snapchat I talked about, how that runs in the background always. Um, or just while you're using it. So, there's that. 
Okay. Nothing. Awesome. Thanks, Kate. Good words. So, yeah. So we'll, we will keep you posted on as many things as we can. If you've ever got a question, don't hesitate to come up here. And if we don't know the answer, we will sure work to find the answer for you. So just a few more things, and, and then we're done. I wanted to give you some resources, uh, just some, some books that I've been reading here lately that I think are pretty handy. And, and they cover a number of topics. I don't remember which topic I pulled up first. There we go. Teenage Development. So these are some really good books on teenage development. And I say teenage development. Actually, one of these, the first two are on teenage girls and teenage guys. Um, these are fantastic books. Uh, the, the guy ones by a guy named, a fellow named Steve Gorelli. The female ones by a lady named Jenny Olson. Uh, both have been working in student ministry for decades. Both are highly degreed, and they just got a lot of great stuff on teenage development, teenage discipleship. So those are really cool. But this other book, and you may have heard of it, if you, if you haven't, though, it's fantastic. It's called It's Just a Phase, so don't miss it. This is actually child development from, from the cradle all the way until they're out of your house. It actually breaks down each chapter about what your kid, um, it's sometimes a little technical, what your kid's supposed to be doing as a 12-year-old, a 13-year-old. Um, but it approaches it from the biblical standpoint of here are the things, biblically speaking, that, that, that a 12-year-old boy or 12-year-old girl should understand and know. And so it engages not only uh, you uh, health-wise, but it engages you in the spiritual health uh, uh, assessment as well. Uh, it's written by Reggie Joyner, who's a really, really great pastor. That's, that's been a fun read for me, both for my guys. My, my little kiddos are 11 and 9, uh, but I check that frequently on, on stuff with your teenagers as well. So. Because um, a 12-year-old is not what a 12-year-old was 10, 10 years ago. And that's, in some ways, that's a great thing. In other ways, that's a terrible thing. Um, they know a lot more at age 12 than they probably should. But anyway, those are three great books. The next little section is on bullying. Um, I, I've had a handful of conversations with some of you about bullying. And it's just you're dealing with that in your world, um, either as your kid has been doing some of that or they're experiencing that. Um, so these are two books that I've read recently. They're both by a fellow named Jonathan McKee. He's a youth pastor that I really, really love. Uh, this one's called Bystanders. It's a novel, um, but what I like about it, I say, I carefully say, I, I hated this book. Like it made me mad. It made me cry. Um, it's a novel, but it's written from a teenage perspective. And, and if there's any book that you wanted to read um, from a Christian perspective that immerses you in teenage culture right now, and, and I would say even urban culture specifically, which is where we live. Now, it's a, it's a California high school, um, but a lot of the stuff I read here, I've heard these conversations play out at Martin High School as I was walking through the halls. Um, it, it'll immerse you in teenage culture, but it actually shows you, um, I don't want to use the phrase easy, um, it shows you um, why bullying happens in and, and some ways that, that we as parents, and even your kids can help prevent that. And a lot of it really does come or has to do with just how we're treating other people. So that was really good. This one's more on the technical side, what to do when your kid's being bullied, and it's stuff that you can read, but also some stuff your kids can read too that will help help them as well, called The, the Bullying Breakthrough. Uh, again, if, if you have a kid that is a bully, there's some good stuff in there for them too. But Jonathan McKee is really attacking that particular subject right now. I'm very thankful for that. And then the last set of books I wanted to show you are right, Discipleship at Home. Uh, my sermon I gave last week, um, I just did uh, just a couple of minutes worth of stuff, and I made the statement to you that, that the, the Lord, when we all get to heaven, the Lord is going to talk to you about your kids before he's going to talk to me about your kids. Even though I'm your kid's youth pastor, um, you're the top-tier responsibility in your kid's discipleship, not me. It's my job and it's my heart's desire to, yes, disciple them, but to help you disciple your kids as well. And so I, I want to do that, and I want to do that well. And part of that is me. Um, teaching you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years, but also giving you some of the resources that I've found. Um, a couple of the ones that I've come across lately that are particularly helpful, and this is, this one is just for boys, but man, I've, I've, I've had to um, suggest it to two or three dads here lately. It's called Raising Modern Day Nights. It's a fantastic, it's about 25 years old, but it is, I use the word classic, like it's 150 years old. It's only 25 years old. Um, but Robert Lewis is, is probably still at kind of a leader on, on mentoring and discipling men and even uh, teenage boys. So that's a really great read. Um, but this one, these next two are really, really helpful for guys and, guys and girls. This one's called It's Not Too Late. Um, and I love the title because I don't know how many parents I've dealt with over the years. That my kid's 16 or 17. I, I feel like at this point it's a lost cause. And it's not. It's really not, truly. Even after your kids have left the house, it's not a lost cause to, to, to seek to reach your kids and, 
and continue to teach them how to follow the Lord. But specifically, even a 17 or 18 or 18 year old boy or girl, when they're in your house, man, they, they are your mission field. These are the ones that, that God has called you to reach. And, and, and this is a great resource to help you understand how to do that. Um, I, I'll never tell you it's easy. It's not. Um, my job's not easy here. My job at home is even harder. Now, again, I just got 11, 11 year old and, and two and nine year olds. I, some of y'all are going, just wait. I know. I know. I've been preparing for 18 years now. And two more years, I'm still not going to be ready. And that's okay. Um, but yeah, this is a great, great resource. It's really, really good. Um, this one's the disciple making parent. This, this one's kind of technical, if I could use that term. Um, but it really gets in the nuts and bolts of what you can be doing on a regular basis to disciple your kids uh, one on one, collectively as a family. Really, really great resource. And then I didn't put it up on the, the screen. But this one's pretty good, too. I've only just started to get to this, but it's called This Changes Everything, How the Gospel Transforms the Teenage Years. It's by a guy named ja Jaquel Crow. So, and I, I, oh, no, Jaquel's not a guy. Sorry. Ja Jaquel's a girl. Um, but she's a good one. So, sorry. I, I don't, I typically don't care who wrote it. I just, you know, if it's a helpful resource. But uh, when you're Amazoning that one, you're going to want to know. So, ja Jaquel Crow, I bet that's been a, a helpful book also. Um, so again, those are just some handy resources, but I wanted to give you just four, four simple tips, um, and, and I say simple, um, maybe I should, I should be more careful with this phrase, four things that I've discovered with my little guys, but also with your teenagers that I know are helpful when, when you're discipling at home, okay, number one, and this is pretty easy, when you pick your kids up on Wednesday night, on Sunday morning, Sunday night, anytime you congregate, ask them, hey, don't, and, and I, I use this specific phrase, what was taught tonight, don't ask them, hey, what'd you learn? Because you know, your kids have been in school long enough, you ask them the question, hey, what'd you learn today? What's the response? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. And you know that's not true. Now, they may not have processed the information and learned it themselves, but information was disseminated to them. Whether or not they learned it, it's a different conversation. Okay? I can promise you, and hopefully by now you've heard me teach enough too, you know that whenever we get up to teach in this church, um, we're not spoon-feeding um, baby milk to your kids. We're declaring the whole gospel to them. And yes, sometimes we are uh, making it smaller chunks so that they can process it better than, than maybe what we're doing on Sunday mornings. Um, but but we're, not, we're not being simplistic at all. I'm being simplistic in an effort to help them understand, but it's, it's not uh, 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 children's church in here by any stretch. But here's why I say, what did you learn? Because every once in a while, your kids are, they may walk in here and everything they've heard is something they've heard before. So they didn't learn anything today. But it's not about learning new information. Um, if we walk out of here and you learn something new but your life didn't change, who gives a care, right? That's irrelevant. If I've got a head full of Bible knowledge, but I'm not even a little bit more like Jesus, then I've wasted everybody's time, truly. And so what we're about around here is reminding students of what's right and wrong, and truly, we're, we're after transformation. So even if it's a lesson they've heard before, like, eventually we're going to cover Adam and Eve again. We're going to do Noah's Ark again. I know those stories. And actually, what's interesting, when we have done those stories, in a couple cases this semester, it's pretty amazing. The kids that have grown up in church, you say one or two things, and they're like, wait, what? That's in the Bible? That's part of the story? Yeah. I didn't know that. So they are learning new things. But again, it's not about having more information. It's about transformation. So ask them the question, hey, what was taught tonight? And then when they give you that answer, you carry that on. Okay, keep asking them. Okay, so, okay, you talked about First Peter. Awesome. What did you learn about? Or actually, we did Philemon this past week. Okay, what did you learn from Philemon? Okay, what's the point of Philemon? Who, you know, who is an estimate? And if it's a book you're, you're familiar with, awesome. But even if it's a book you're not familiar with, I suspect all of you got a good enough handle on the Bible that you can carry on this conversation with your students. But engage them in that, truly. Now, when my kids come home, and Anson's, Anson's in fifth grade, this, I, I, I'll admit my stupidity here. Anson's reached the point in math class that I sit down to help him with his math homework, and I have to secretly Google a few things, right? <laughs> and I hate that, but that's just, that was never my subject at all, right? Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm willing to, to learn this stuff because I want, I want to engage my kids. Um, what your students are doing in school matters. Don't hear me say that. But I promise you what we're doing up here matters more. They're not going to have an algebra test when they get to the kingdom gates. They're not. The Lord is going to be asking them about his relationship with them. And so, um, again, as your parents, as their parents, 
engage them in what's being taught right here, and then carry on those conversations, and you get to take the next step. Okay, you talked about Philemon. Awesome. Let's, you know, let's read that again. It's 25 verses. Let's go and read that tonight. Talk about it. That's really, really cool, okay? Uh, next thing. Uh, tell them what you're reading from your Bible study or devotional time. And it could be just a, hey, you know, when, when they get up in the morning, if, if you're a, 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 a morning time, quiet time person, and you, your kids get up and they, they've got the zombie walk going on, and you're sitting with them at the breakfast table, say, hey, you want to hear something cool I read this morning scriptures? And they might go, yeah, sure, whatever. You know? And they may not even acknowledge that you're talking with them. But you're making that effort to declare the word of God to them. And here's what Jesus has promised, that the word of God will never return void. Ever, not once, ever. And that's just, again, I, I, I'm careful to use that word simple, but, but this is a, a, a very um, practical, fairly easy way that you can engage your kids in a Bible conversation. And from time to time they go, oh, you know, that's kind of interesting. But every once in a while I promise you, and they go, wow, that, that's pretty neat. And here's the question that you can't wait for, and I hope that they ask you this a lot. They're going to say, well, what does that mean? Yay! Like, let's talk about what that means and then have that conversation with them. And it may just be a three or four minute conversation, but that's a gospel driven Bible conversation you can have with your kids. Here's, here's my goal for you, truly. I would love for your students, and this, this is the way, biblically speaking, this is the way that it already is, but I would love for your kids to see you and not me as the Bible authority in their lives. And I would love for your kids to see you and not Pastor Eric as the Bible authority in their lives. And Pastor, and you, and not Dr. Lamance, and, and, and David Jenkins is the Bible authority in their lives. And that's very, very possible. Truly, it is. Because it's not about, you know, who knows more or what. Again, yes, Dr. Hurston has all sorts of degrees in his walls. Again, the Lord's not going to be asking him, him about your kid. He's going to be asking you. So engage them in those conversations. And when they ask you why, it's okay, by the way, to say, you know, I don't know. But I'll find out the answer. It's okay, and I would I'd love to do this. You know, you know let's, let's go together. Let's go to, go to TJ's office after school and, and go ask this question. And I might not know the answer either, but, but you're leading these kids in this really cool Bible treasure hunt. And you really look at it in that, that sense. This is a treasure hunt because the scriptures are God's treasure to us. So lead them in these conversations, and I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Number three, ask them what you can pray with them about and then pray with them at that moment. Um, so my mentor, one of the things that he taught me, um, and I'll never forget this, anytime his kids ever left the house, before they walked out the door, whether it was before school or just going to work in the afternoons, his children never left his home without him praying with them because they were leaving the, you know, the, the safety of the home and they were going out in the world. And so he would, it, it was never a big, long, elaborate prayer, but he would pray God's safety and protection over them. But, but prayer was just constantly poured on them. And reach the point now that he's died. He died a few years ago, um, but I know, I know both of his kids, and they still, like, they still talk about the fact they miss the day. He's not there to pray with them, but they know the importance of number one, praying with their kids. But number two, I've seen them before they walk out of the door, just on their own, they pray. Okay, Lord, I'm going out into the world now. Help me, protect me. It's an amazing thing. Ask your kids what you can pray for them about. They might catch them off guard, and they might go, oh, I don't know. That's okay. But, but just make a point to almost, you know, I'm sure maybe you still do nighttime bedtime prayers. But not just at the dinner table, maybe before they go to school in the morning, but just some random, excuse me, some random afternoon. Hey, what can I pray for you about? I pray for you all the time, but I want to be specific. And maybe, you know, you're praying for a friend, or maybe it's a test coming up, or, or, or they're just really stressed about something. And, and, and then take that couple of minutes and pray with them right there. Guys, I promise that that's going to help help your relationship with your kids. And that changes the way they view you and prayer. And then finally, just read the Bible together at the dinner table. So what we found, and I say at the dinner table, and I say it from that standpoint, that's, that's what I found and what works for our family. Um, so we do, we're together at dinner at least three or four times a week. It depends on what daddy's got going on. Um, so we do our, our devotion at, at the, the dinner table. Now what we've got, because of my kids' age, we still have a, a children's Bible. But every, every night that we're together, my kids know it. They grab the little the devotion Bible and read a passage, they read a passage of scripture, and, and there's a little devo that did. So Daddy reads that, and then we talk about it as a family. And again, they're 11 and 9. It's not a big, deep theological diatribe. But I always love it when my kids do ask a follow-up question. And that happens. But we're all together. We're at the dinner table. Conversations are going to happen. Why not steer that towards the Lord? 
because that's a great time to get a captive audience. And, and worst case scenario, they're shoving a mouth full of food, they can't talk back, <laughs> right? That's a really great time, though, to engage them. Um, if, if you want some, some family depots, that's awesome, but, but truly, at the very, very least, and it didn't have to be, in fact, it didn't have to be a, a huge, long chapter. Maybe it's just five or six verses. Maybe it's a portion of the Psalms or a proverb. But read the scriptures together at the dinner table. And again, I promise you, I'm going to say this again, because this is God's promise, not mine. The scriptures will never return void, ever. God blesses his word in the kids' lives. And he'll bless it. Well, I don't know if I said it or not. I'm going to say this, and, and my, he may convict me this later on. I really believe he's going to bless his word in their lives coming from your lips even more than he's going to bless it coming from because you are the spiritual authority of the homes. And I want them, and God wants them, wants your kids to see that. Does that make sense? Again, four, they're not huge things. But man, those are springboard and some fun conversations at your house. I really believe that. Okay? Now, whether it's about this or something else, what, what questions you have youth ministry wise, go. Anything? Yes, ma'am. Uh, hanging with the groom. Yes, ma'am. Um, so we're going to shoot to be done between 3 and 3.30. The only one that may not be true is when we're packing those boxes. We may be here until 5 o'clock that afternoon. Um, it's just that that one's going to be until the job's done. Um, but yeah, we're, we're 3 to 3.30 is kind of what we're shooting for. And we'll, we'll be sending out word um, to specifically, like when we leave Mission Arlington. Um, actually, I'm glad you brought that up. When we leave Mission Arlington, though, we'll, we'll have everybody shoot a text message home. Hey, we're done. We're headed back to the church. With that in mind, though, um, for that one, uh, well, really all, all of them, uh, we need help transporting students to these places. And so if you'd be willing to help us out this afternoon, so we've got a sign up list. Yeah, over there. Uh, if you can help transport kids that day, uh, sign that up, and then we'll, we'll shoot you the schedule and tell you how you can help us transport students. And then we, we want students to start signing up for Hanging the Green, too. In their newsletters this morning, which, Darwin, is there a pile of newsletters still right there? No, but there's waivers. Oh, good. Yes, we've got the, I'm glad you said that, we've got the liability waivers. A lot of you have already done those for the year. Uh, if you didn't hear, we only have to do one a year now. Yay, right? Um, now, New Year is coming, so like January 2019, I'm going to pass all those out. I'm going to knock those out and be done with them for the year. Forget about them. But if you've never filled out one of the liability waivers, waivers um, one of the ones specifically, and I think it was right before camps so when we turned them into a one-year form, Fill that out for us real fast tonight when we're done with that. We do need those for hanging the green. But if you can help us transport, that would be really, really great. We appreciate that. Just, if you just want to come help us, come sing or, or see the Women's Center or whatever, we'd certainly like you to, to jump in too. Uh, and then we want to start signing kids up for hanging on the green uh, as quickly as possible as well. It's a great question. What else? If you're not sure if your child has turned in one of these waivers or if it's still valid, I have a list of valid waivers. Awesome. Yeah, Miss Sandra, Miss Sandra, got us hooked up with that. She's all sorts of awesome. Got her. Can they turn those in on Wednesday night? It's me. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to. If you don't want them to stick around to that tonight, that's fine. If you do, that's fine. We've got the copy machine. You can go up and use that too. So, yeah, we got those waivers. What else can we help you with? Yes, ma'am. Um, No, we're, we're going to, I want the boys to see the tour as well. Um, because of the size of the facility, it, it may end up being a situation where, where they just don't have room for all of us. And if I had anybody go through it, I'd want the girls to go through first. But my goal is to get the boys in there too, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you that's a big deal. Well, with the, with, yeah, what, it, it, what's going to end up happening is, is the boys and I, well, again, because of the size of the facility, the girls are going to go first. And if they'll let us switch, which is my goal, the boys and I are going to go pick up stuff, and when it's time to switch, the boys and I will go to the, the center, and the girls will come back here and hopefully keep picking stuff up. Okay. That's what, what I'm kind of lobbying for with them. Okay. Um, predominantly, they want to work with young ladies, which I totally get, but I, I want the boys to understand that process. At the very, very least, though, um, pregnancy resource center is something I'm really, really passionate I was a pregnancy resource baby, so our boys are going to know kind of what goes on there because I want them to know, again, heaven forbid, it's that their girlfriend, but if it if they've got a friend that's a female, I want them to be able to say, hey, man, I don't know where this great place you can go. And they're, and they're able to, it's a little bit different, a little bit awkward, but the center can handle it. They're able to take that young lady to the center, whether, again, whether it's their girlfriend or not, they can support that young lady in that way. And they are perfectly capable when a teenager walks in, 
they know how to deal with that, which is cool. So anyway, so that's the goal. I don't know if that's the way it's going to play out, but that's what I'm shooting for. So. Anybody else? Cool. I'm, I'm going to pray with you. Sue, thank you so much for your time. I really uh, value that. And um, I can't thank you enough for letting us work with your students. We, we love them. I hope you know that. We're, we're going to keep working to prove that to you. We love 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 you. Lord Jesus, thank you for these parents. Thank you for um, the, the treasure you have given us in, in loaning us your kids. Father, at the end of the day, they really are yours. And, and uh, we are stewards of them. So help us do that well. Help us to see, um, Father, for starters, your beauty and, and, and how obeying you is such a joy. But the number two, the, the joy of, of raising kids to, to love you more than anything. And it is hard, so help us, please. Give us strength. Give us endurance. Give us Buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets of patience, um, especially when, when hormones hit and arguments happen and, 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 and there's 17 different events going on. And, um, Lord, help us to see um, all the time, Father, what it is that you want us to do with your kids. And that might look different for every family, but, but you make that clear. Thank you for these parents. God bless them over and over again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cool. Thanks, y'all.